Hey, Foot Clan, we got a great episode for you today. It's a waiver wire show. We got some big names to talk about, some news to get into. We got Smoke Fire, and Mike is back. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you like the video, you leave a comment, something nice, and enjoy the show. Foot Clan today's show is brought to you by pristineauction.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I know Halloween hasn't hit yet, but those holidays are fast approaching, and figuring out a perfect gift for that feller in your life, it can be difficult. Not anymore. Pristine Auction. Get signed memorabilia. Find their favorite players. Find a jersey from Alvin Kamara. Find someone like Debo Samuel, who a recent jersey signed by him went for just $51. That Kamara jersey, just $81. There are hundreds of new auctions every single day. I have totally outfitted my office at home with Pristine Auction. Always authentic signatures. Go to pristineauction.com and use our registration code BALLERS. And when you do, you'll get a $10 credit for your first auction victory. This is Hunter Henry, tied in for the Los Angeles Chargers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, back with you, Waiver Day. Seemed like the right time for a Hunter Henry intro, four straight weeks of scoring. Yeah, it does. I you t- you talk about the Los Angeles Charger Hunter Henry. That's right. Mm. Um, it's just a little time machine, my friend. Yeah, this is a big week for us. Uh, guys, did he did he say he was on the Chargers? He did. He what did. an idiot! What an idiot! He doesn't even know his own team. <laughs> what a dummy, dumb face. Um, this is a big week, though. You I know didn't what even this- notice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waking up. You know what this week is, gentlemen. We got our Halloween episode on Friday. Yeah, I mean, we have some things planned oh, for there's, Friday. There's some things. I've been wearing hats uh, on the reg. Mm-hmm. Why is that, Andy? Because I've been, uh, I've had, I've been forced to grow my hair out for what's happening on Friday. I've been wearing hats because I'm growing out my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, by the way. Yeah, it's good to be back, America. Um. I hope you didn't come back in time to see last night's game. I got no. I didn't watch it. Oh, oh thank goodness! I had oh. to listen to it. <laughs> Wait, That's still listen? better. That's still better. What does that even sound like? Just silence, rain. Did you hear the rain? Uh, I heard a couple, some smattering of applause every once in a while. I heard DK. That Metcalf wasn't had applause. A, had a monster touchdown. That had to be sarcasm. <laughs> Look, that was this. I'm, I'm going to say it right now. I get paid to watch football. Mm-hmm. I almost quit my job yesterday. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's it a was, rough job sometimes. It was the single. I, I'm not joking. That was the single least enjoyable football game I have watched since I began this podcast. I did not want to be in front of that television because I already knew what every play was going to be, which was ineptitude <laughs> followed by ineptitude, and then you mix in the rain. Mm. I mean, you know how the sports books have those alternate lines for the over mm-hmm. and, and you can go, you can drag the line way yep. down. Look, the lowest possible line was like 21 points and it almost went under that. And it was just not enjoyable whatsoever. You had, I mean, the Seattle receivers, all pass catchers in Seattle combined for 12 total receptions. Geno Smith attempted 22 passes. He was sacked five times. Jameis was in the perfect matchup for Jameis because he looked better than Geno did, and he looked awful. Impressive. I mean, this was – it was a one play to make DK Metcalf's day. Jameis Winston had a QBR of 46. He was terrible, and he Mm -hmm. almost doubled Geno Smith. This was the most worthless game. In fact, we can recap it like this. Alvin Kamara is a very good receiver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. DK Metcalf still big and strong. Yes. And seen. Yeah. Well, all you all you people, all the anti domers out there. Seriously. They I they come out in droves all the time. Anytime you when you mentioned 
We should put everything in a dome. Look, yeah. A retractable roof. That's nice. There, there are anti domers. But, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We got to be got to be outside in the elements. Is this and big this sky? Is what, this is what you get. <laughs> big sky. Yes, big, big sky, sky is in on this. <laughs> Honestly, there's only one place that I think it's legitimate. That's Lambo. That's it. Lambo, okay, you get the you get the snowy games and the yeah, but then heritage. it turns into trash. Oh, somebody got you trash for fun. But I'm saying somebody outside, got outside, you outside of that outside outside or, of the snowiest, coldest place in the world. Yes, yes, that's its own thing. Oh, big sky got a hold of Jason. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, it's, it's a slippery slope, man. The fact that the two primetime games big were snow. were both the <laughs> rainiest, sloppiest, worst football ever. It put a roof on it, man. Well, we do have a Thursday night game this week between two teams that have a combined 13 consecutive wins. Green Bay, Arizona. Yeah, you there should, we go. You should see some in a in a dome. So if something goes wrong, you can fix the situation. That's right. Um but I don't I don't want to talk about yesterday's game anymore. We've got waivers to get into. We got to get you ready for week uh 8 coming up and um there's plenty to be excited about beyond the establish the run offenses that you saw last night. I did like I'll, I'll add one more thing. Pete Carroll came out after and I don't have the exact mm. quote in front of yes. me. But it was essentially like I've been here a long time and if I didn't have Russell Wilson I probably wouldn't be here a long time. Yeah, good for you, Pete. Beautiful yeah, honesty. Like understand. It is a weird chicken or egg situation there with head coaches because you've seen it with Bill Belichick. You look on the other side of the football you know, for the for the whatever it was, fourteen years that Drew Brees was the head coach or the quarterback, uh, head coach, quarterback yeah, yeah, of the Saints, yeah. they were number one in scoring. <laughs> they're they're twenty ninth this year, and last night probably knocked them even further down. So it's Sean, almost like the players are pretty important, <laughs> right? <laughs> like right. The quarterback matters. You mean like the most important position in sports? <laughs> yes. I I couldn't help but think watching Alvin Kamara. Like I know the Titans are in this category. But it's it's almost like your entire team's success is one hundred percent one player. Like if Alvin Kamara does not exist on that team, oh woof, you might not win a game, and it might be the same for Tennessee. But let's move on. We've got uh, what do we got? Some smoke fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. Hey, uh, Brooksy, can we, yes, sir. can we get the, uh, can we get a Hunter Henry, like where he's from college intro? Mm, that'd be great. Can we get or a high school team intro oh. for next episode? We're going back even further. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, Pop like, Warner? Yeah. All right. Can Go I, gladiators. Can I blame, can I blame somebody for that? Like, could I blame Al? Oh, absolutely. You could. For or that, you, that should have been look team agnostic. Mirror. Look in the mirror. How was I supposed to know? <laughs> That's all right. Me. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Someone Me too. Did it. Me too. Oh, fall on the sword. Where there's smoke, <laughs> there's fire. Look at the buttons there. I I feel like it's been vetted. If the buttons I'm there, Ron I have a right to push it. That's true. <laughs> Thank you, Khalil Herbert. Where there's smoke, oh, there's brother. fire. Uh, the running back eleven. Okay, that was an amazing debut. It was against Green Bay. Big deal. Wait a minute. Running back eight against Tampa Bay. When your offense is inept. When your head coach is inept and you go out against a run defense like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who don't even need to stop the pass and you put up a number eight finish. Mm -hmm. And look, Jason was in his own world of swirling sadness on Sunday, but part of it was him acknowledging and almost wanting comfort in the thought that David Montgomery is not going to have his workload <laughs> indicted by this breakout Khalil Herbert performance. Please, sir, don't take it away from me. David needs this work. So where where there's smoke, there's fire, Khalil Herbert. Um, so this this is interesting, right? I'm, I, I am a, 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 a wee bit biased. <laughs> Khalil, Khalil Herbert looks amazing. We gave you credit, Mike, if you didn't hear. For I, your, I did. For I your appreciate scouting. it. Thank you. Um, he looks great. Um, I don't think he is going away. Um, I th so in that sense, I think it is fire. Damian Williams be going away. Yeah, that's the way that I kind of read this situation. Now there is a little bit of questions uh, regarding like Damian Williams, probably the better pass catcher. Um, but as far as pure running back, uh, Khalil Herbert is so much greater sign than Damian Williams. Now, if you look back at the first four weeks for the Chicago Bears, 
and you say, okay, well, what, what was happening there? It was pretty much a 70-30 split between David Montgomery, 70, and and Damian Williams, 30. And when I say pretty much, it was exactly that. Um, you should have led with that. I should I should have said it was exactly 70-30 <laughs> split because it was. So ah. um, so the thing is, is, is the question to me, as far as Khalil Herbert going forward, whether this is smoke or fire, is will he get more than 30% of the work? Yes. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> but not much more. Does that help? That, that's helpful, 60, yeah. 60 40. A little band aid on it. 60 40, some injury protection. Montgomery coming off the injury, seeing which, you know, taking the load off of him. But, um, you know, he, he is eligible to return from injury this week. But that doesn't, you know, or, or from injury reserve this week. Yeah, I mean, I think 60 40 is what you're looking at. And I think Khalil Herbert's got juice, but this has to be, this is unfortunately fantasy smoke. Because mm. you can't – the question is really can you play Khalil Herbert moving forward? Well, can you play him against San Francisco if Montgomery is still not back? You can play him until Montgomery returns. Now, okay, for the 60-40, because I, I agree that like Herbert has looked outstanding, and how do you move away from this one, once the genie is out? How do, you, how do you say go away, magical genie that I have found? But I don't think that Damian Williams will completely go away. So if you're looking at like a 60-40, I think you have to work in at least some snaps for for Damian. It won't just be the two of them. Uh, it's so I'm I, I agree that this is smoke for for fantasy moving forward. That Herbert is gonna be he won't usurp David Montgomery. Montgomery will still be valuable for for fantasy football. Takes a big hit. I don't think you can look at your bench and go, I got a running back one. That's about to come back. Yeah, and in week nine is when you should be thinking about Montgomery returning. Um, you know, he had a couple games of 80, 82% snaps earlier in the season. So why not week eight? <laughs> is that just hope? Well, I'm just saying the timeline because he, he missed five, six, and seven. It's the injury <clears throat> timeline, not the injured reserve timeline. Okay. Now so the problem you, is you are you are working I, hard. Look, I need you, David. Um, but the reality is, if he's not back this week, right? If he doesn't, if he's not ready to come back this week, you say, okay, you're targeting, you're hoping for week nine. Week ten is their bye week, so it's one of those things where you if he's not, hold him. if he's not ready now, there's a good chance, especially if Khalil Herbert's looking good, that they say we give him one more week rest, miss one game, we get two more weeks, and he's ready to go full bore. But that's week eleven. So for fantasy managers, yeah, how do you react to yourself on that one? I hate myself right now. I mean, I'm I'm really struggling with the words coming out of my mouth, and I'm thinking, we hate, baby. Now we're we're only two weeks in here, and we're a redraft show. But dynasty, David Montgomery has one more year on his contract. How does this? It, it again, very small sample, just two weeks. But does this give you a little bit of David Montgomery dynasty heebie-jeebies? Not really. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a terrifying additional question to bring up uh aj brown smoke fire you know wasn't was simultaneously injured and a bad receiver to begin the season um but the last two weeks has been dominant buffalo 22nd in his return basically from from injury uh and then fourth at the wide receiver position against kansas city when they just dismantled the chiefs and he um, was one yard from finishing even higher yeah, he was, and he was great. I mean, he looked great. He had Julio out there, which was helpful, I think, for AJ Brown. And you know, you didn't even need a receiving touchdown or a running touchdown from Derrick Henry in this one. So, do you do you trade high on AJ Brown? No, I do not. This, you, this you ride fire. the lightning. Yeah, he's bad. He's dominant. This is it's not the first time we've seen this exact same scenario. Is he getting which bigger? Is ridiculous. Uh, I mean, he's still lifting he looks weights. Bigger. Still, still hitting that. Still hitting the weights. So why not? Yeah, I mean, he's a young man. He looks like Metcalf. I mean, he really does. He looks like Metcalf physically. Yeah. Well, and they were they were college teammates, so they've they've got the same workout regime. Mm -hmm. um, which we should get a hold of that. Um, That's illegal. The, the reality is, last <laughs> you know, the fact that this kind of happened last year comforts the AJ Brown manager. Makes you realize, like he was injured in the beginning of last year. 
had kind of a stretch of games where he was worthless. You regretted the draft pick. If you had held on, you were like, oh, I don't regret that anymore. From week five on, once he got back last season, he was the wide receiver three. Not like, oh, he was a wide receiver one. He was, he, it was Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, and A.J. Brown. So, yeah, this is absolutely fire because it's who he is. Mm -hmm. It's what you drafted him to be. And the fact that he did it with Julio, I know Julio's still coming back off the hamstring injury. I'm sure he'll have his games. But I, I, I'm all in on, on A.J. Brown. I think that he's going to have a phenomenal rest of season and be one of those top five or six wide receivers. I would agree. Uh, that's fire. Yeah, all right. You just hold it. That was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, presented by our friends at Traeger Grills. Put a Traeger wood pellet grill in your starting lineup. Make every game day more delicious. Head to Traeger dot com slash footballers to discover how simple wood fired cooking can be news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper shield thy ears al borland packer loyalist Devonte adams has been placed on the covid 19 reserve list that sucks the game is Thursday night. He would need two negative tests before Thursday. The betting line changed from uh, Packers plus three to Packers plus six on the news of one wide receiver potentially Just, missing. That's very the game. not normal. No. If, if if you are if you're like oh yeah well that makes sense. It betting wise it does not make sense. Yeah, Devontae Adams is very not normal, so that makes sense. Right. I mean, this is a uh, a devastating thing for uh, the, the Packers this week, but fantasy-wise, it means there's opportunity for someone else to step up. We saw Devontae Adams miss a few games in recent memory, and in those games, you know, obviously this is a difficult matchup. The Cardinals have been good, but in those games, Aaron Rodgers has been fine, even better, um, which is kind of mind-blowing. So there will certainly be... In a in a matchup that you you, you presume that the Cardinals are going to score, and we're going to talk waivers here in a little bit, but there will be relevant pass catchers here. We just got to pick them out. Yeah, and it's going to be tough because Lazard kind of stepped up last week, but Cobb has had a week. Robert Tunyon could be involved. MVS could be coming back. They hope he's back from the the IR this week. So and, we'll we'll preview that game yeah, we and will. talk through it and save it. But speaking of players that just look like they're getting larger. Did Alan Lazard grow like two feet? The guy Was it looked, the jerseys, the fifty jerseys, maybe because he looked he looked just gigantic out there, mm. towering over everybody. I mean, he is six five. That's shocking to me. <laughs> you did. I thought he was five eleven. He's six five. Yes, mm -hmm. six five. That's 227. crazy. Going full Mac Hollins on us, guys. <laughs> Dude, Mac Hollins. When did he become a tight end? <laughs> All right, uh, Nick Chubb expected to play in week eight against the Steelers, barring any setbacks in practice. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Miles Sanders week to week with a low ankle sprain. I don't really think that he's going to play this week. So no. we'll, we'll talk in waivers about Kenneth Gainwell, Boston Scott. Uh, we will not talk about Bart Scott. Congratulations <laughs> to the, Can't everyone, wait. everyone listening. Nice, Mike. Uh, Josh Jacobs, chest contusion. Uh, he's expected to be fine following the week eight bye. Kenyon Drake has had two very relevant weeks for the Las Vegas Raiders. And you wonder, you know, is it worth holding him through the bye for a uh, running back needy team? Well, for a running back needy team, I doubt you can hold someone through the bye. You probably need someone that is playing this week. Maybe you have wide receivers you can depart with. Obviously, I do think Kenyon Drake would be good if Josh Jacobs isn't ready to go. Um, and whenever there's an expectation that he should be good to go after the bye, there is a chance. You don't think he's not. Is what's the injury status of uh, Peyton Barber? They they he was technically taken off of the injury list, but hasn't been involved because Jalen Richard's back, and then they gave some drives to Drake and John I'm, Gruden. I'm gone. holding on to Drake through the bye. Okay, um, but that's just based on team need. You know, I have an Antonio Gibson bye coming up, and the stuff on the waiver wire. It's a no good. Yeah, you got to be hopeful. Zach Wilson, two to four weeks, you're going to miss uh, Zach Wilson out there on the field, so the Jets traded for good old friend Joe Flacco. But why? 
Um, yeah, that's that's something that's interesting. They still had the uniform, so they didn't have to print up a new <laughs> uniform. It's a, it's a cost savings, right? That, from they, before they they do care about pension pennies, but um, <laughs> I, I would say this: <laughs> this is good news for Jamison Crowder for Corey Davis. Like I presume, Joe Flacco will be better than what we've seen from Zach Wilson. Not good, just better, just enough to where it's like oh, okay. Are you, but How great is, would it be if they traded for him to bring him in to be the backup? Well, that's what I mean. Like, is, <laughs> How awesome would that be? Can Joe Flacco actually start this week? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Mike White's your other option, so yeah. He's the immediate starter without question. Yeah, but I liked how many times that, that he threw to the running backs. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Frank Reich says he's optimistic T.Y. Hilton will be ready to play in Sunday's game against the Titans. He was close last week to returning. They have a nice schedule for the next few weeks. So I would not be surprised if you saw a little bit of T.Y. Hilton action out there for the fantasy universe. I mean, Carson Wentz has been playing great. I, How I, does that make you feel, Mike? Because he yeah, really has emotional. been playing well. Is that why you were on? Did you take a vacation so you didn't have to? I did. Yeah. I, yeah, that was the biggest problem. Uh, no, it makes me feel fantastic because of my love mm. for Michael Pittman. It was a great start this week. That's a great – you can't lose. Yes. Carson Wentz sucks. It's not Michael Pittman's fault. It's That's Wentz. That's right. Maybe maybe it's Pittman's fault that Wentz is playing so good, hmm? Yeah, you, you, ever, yeah, think, you, think, you think, of think of that? Huh? Malcolm Brown, injured reserve, running back for the Dolphins. Oh, my. So, you said that like you did not know that. I didn't. Okay. I well, knew he was hurt, but I hadn't heard he had gotten put on the IR. That's so, Miles – Fill Gassner, her up. Fill, <laughs> fill her up. Um. Michael Gallup is eligible to return from IR. I think he's going to be a popular waiver pickup for a lot of people, and I'm he won't. He's not really someone I'm looking at. I, I mean, they're the targets already with the uh, you know with Dalton Schultz coming. Yeah, I mean, I'd well, rather flex Dalton Schultz than I would Michael Gallup on return. But yeah. that's the question because you, my, like Dalton Schultz, not really involved the first couple weeks, and I know Michael Gallup was only half of week one but if Michael Gallup is back does that take Dalton Schultz from that 20 plus percent target share down to like 15 and take his true fantasy value away I think that's very possible it is possible you're right that was today's news and notes brought to you by sleeper the leader in breaking news alerts our good friends at sleeper grab the app get the breaking alerts channel and then you can find out when Malcolm Brown hits IR that's right mm. and other significant news like that yeah uh and we want to thank head and shoulders today for sponsoring this show head and shoulders scalp shield technology it's never not working to give you a hundred percent dandruff protection even between washes if you have not been tuning in on our thursday episodes maybe you're just a a waiver wire show uh listener and you always want the waiver listen How on thursday you? because the head and shoulders uh, never not working segment is uh, look a little too too. It's outstanding. It's great. We are diving deep on certain stats or looking at certain players that are gonna. We're looking ahead and we're looking beyond just the surface to make sure that we are never not working to get Foot Clan titles for yeah. the for the Foot Clan. That and, segment is never not awesome. Oh, that's a that's <laughs> a great point. Head and shoulders scalp is that, shield. Is that next year, head and shoulders? Uh, that, yes. Never not awesome. Never not awesome. <laughs> it works day and night to protect you against flakes. Regular use of head and shoulders scalp shield technology provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. So get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with head and shoulders scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. I also want to tell you about something really cool. Alto IRA. Look, do you have an account with Coinbase? Yes. And uh, are you thinking of opening one if you don't? And do you, you should be. Have you heard about Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano and other cryptocurrencies? Yes. <laughs> the voices are getting deeper. <laughs> um, look, this is the future of money. If you haven't been following it over the last few years, a lot of people have been investing. A lot of people have been messing around with cryptocurrency because it's very exciting. Uh, but what about taxes? Look, if you want to invest in cryptocurrency, you can do it with an Alto Crypto IRA. You can actually invest you have my attention. with Alto Crypto IRA. You can trade crypto like Bitcoin and avoid and defer taxes um, because an IRA is a tax advantage retirement account. So you can set them up um, and no one makes it easier than Alto 
IRA. Their crypto IRA is the easiest way to get it into your IRA. And you can invest with as little as $10. So they don't charge you to set up. If you're ready to take your investments to the next level and diversify like the pros and trade without tax headaches, you can open an Alto Crypto IRA with as little as $10. Just go to altoira.com slash footballers. That's A-L-T-O-I-R-A.com slash footballers. Start investing in cryptocurrency today. Go to altoira.com slash footballers. Put me in, coach. Not quite the by apocalypse we had last week. Only two teams on by heading into week eight, the Raiders and Ravens, which means you get the return of your Bills, Cowboys, Vikings, Steelers, Chargers, and Jags. And you can exhale. We made it. We made it through. Uh, but it's it gets worse next we week. Lost a lot of games, but we, <laughs> but we're still here. There, uh, let's begin at the wide receiver position when we look at the waiver wire. Players to pick up, players to drop. People want to know. Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney. Goodbye. Goodbye. Brandon Ayuk, see you later. Goodbye. Robbie Anderson has 25 yards on 20 targets. That's impossible. No more. He is no trying to hit his own prop bet. You will not <laughs> hurt me anymore, Robbie Anderson. The I mean, you'll want to talk about you, you chase air yards, you chase targets, you chase volume. It's a delightful looking car and we are a dog and it is parked and we are about to run into, I mean, don't chase this with Robbie. He's what? I don't understand it, man. I, I, I get Same that. Darnold. I get that Darnold has been bad, but this is just looking at what has happened. Three receptions on nine targets, three on 11 targets, two on seven targets, five on 11 targets. This is impossible. Like this is. When you are as using analytics and volume and all these things, this is infuriating what Sam Darnold is doing to math right now. And I will not stand for it. One of the problems, and we've discussed this quite a bit in the studio, maybe a little half never not working here. You look at catch percentages on players, and it's not a coincidence that the best quarterbacks have the receivers with the best catch percentage, right? It is more than just an equation that relates to the receiver and their ability. Mm -hmm. It has to do with, you know, Rondale Moore and Christian Kirk were leading the league in catch percentage. Well, your MVP candidate, you know, Kyler Murray, has something to do with that. So Robbie Anderson is one part Robbie problems, two parts Darnold issues. You know, this was a player who was extended – who had Teddy Bridgewater throwing him the ball last year and had no problems. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to come in and say, oh, it's all going to be like the olden days with same Darnold. And what well, is it is. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. So we be careful what you ask for. Other drop candidates, Tyler Lockett, Tim Patrick. I would keep those guys on your roster. Yeah. Now, real quick, because we're approaching. Lockett was a disaster last night. We are. Oh, my gosh, such a Freddie disaster. Freddie Swain was more. It was like the whole backup quarterback, third stringer. When I saw Freddie Swain g grab that slant and go, I was like, "Go lock it!" <laughs> Wait a minute, that's an eight. Darn it! Yeah. Um, but real quick before we drop Robbie Anderson, as I just said, you know, punt him it's off too the late. bridge. I already did. Is this oh. a Watson conversation? That it's a Watson question. What happens to Robbie Anderson if they do indeed trade for Deshaun Watson this week? I mean, I'm not trading for any of these assets or paying up for anyone that could be affected by Deshaun Watson, but cutting them, what, you know, I, I guess it's if, it, <laughs> I guess as I'm working through this, if it's not something necessary, I might just hold on one more week for the hope of that, but I don't blame anyone for moving on. Well, let's, let's compare it to the available options, yes, right? Cause yes. that's all that matters. That is all that matters. It's who, who'd you rather have on your bench? Cause some, a lot of these waiver pickups, you might not be putting them right into your lineup on a week with only two buy teams. You might be stashing them. You might be looking to the future. And so when we look at the waiver wire, you know, there's one player that's half available that is at the very tippy top of my list. And that's Rashad Bateman. I believe that Rashad Bateman is, is good. Is, if you want to compare it to another situation, I do compare it to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett in Seattle where, you know, you look at that situation there and you say, which guy would I rather have? Well, I'd rather have DK Metcalf, which guy can have a big game. Both of them on any given week. I went back and watched all the film on Rashad Bateman from this past week. This is an outstanding player that I think very quickly 
will be a primary target, the primary target in the offense, that doesn't mean anything negative against Hollywood Brown. He's still going to get his three deep bombs a game. He's still going to be very productive, but he's not on the waiver wire. Hollywood Brown's not sitting there in the waiver wire. If he were, I would pick him up. Yeah, so, so Rashad Bateman is a player that may get more ignored, may cost you less fab because of the bye week that's about to hit. So if you're not signing to start, He's at the top of my list. At the top of my list, because obviously you're not starting Bateman this week, and he's almost... I dare a, you to try. <laughs> I mean, I hope you do against me. Um, about the same uh, roster percentage is Kadarius Tony. I would rather have Kadarius Tony than Bateman. You might not have Kadarius Tony back this week. He, he could be, and if he is, Kansas City, heck yeah. Yeah. Um, but he might miss a week, but Bateman will not be ready either. So if you're just comparing the two rookie wide receivers, they're both good options. They both have looked talented on the field. Um, obviously, Bateman has the better quarterback in Lamar versus uh, Daniel Jones, but we've seen Kadarius already have a couple of just massive breakout games. I I, I, I like what I've seen more from Kadarius Toney um, and his ability to actually become the one more than Bateman's personally, but they're they're very similar situations. About half rostered in most leagues might not be available this week, but could have the rookie wide receiver. We talk about this all the time in the draft season. Rookie wide receivers usually don't do well, but they do much, much better the second half mm -hmm. of their rookie year than the beginning. So you don't draft them, but you do pick them up or trade for them. Um, and so, yeah, these two guys. If Marvin Jones is somehow out there, please pick him up off of the bye. Uh, there's the chance that he's out there. And Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, if you're shooting your shot this week without Devontae against the Cardinals defense, which has been, frankly, dominant over the course of the first seven weeks, you know, the Cardinals are going to be at home. This is a tough one. If you're going to start one, like this is a situation where maybe I'm taking my waiver wire and I'm not spending any fab. And sure. And I, I'll put Lazard and I'll put Cobb in there. And if I get one, I get one. And if I don't, I'm not going to – it's no sweat off my back. I don't think I'm going to lose a huge opportunity. I think I, – I would actually spend for Lazard. I think Lazard's going to have a very good game. We saw last week he started to get really um, – there, there was a whole drive that was like all Lazard – um, he's got the trust of Rogers. He, he's going to be necessary. I mean, scored back to back weeks. Yeah. It, I, I, I would pay for Lazard. I think that with Devonte Adams out against a Cardinals, you know, the Cardinals have been a very good defense, but they're, they're ranked 20th against wide receivers. They're giving up enough points. And if anyone's going to get it done, it's going to be Aaron Rodgers. So I, I would take my shot on that. When I'm looking at the other options that I might be picking up, you know, uh, Khalif Raymond, T.Y. Hill and Jamison Crowder, like, I, I think Lazard could ha could be a top 15 wide receiver this week as not projecting that, but in his range of outcomes, whereas most wide receivers on the waiver wire are someone that you're just, you know, you're just hoping for like, get me to that 10 points. And I think that you have a higher hope with Lazard. Yeah, I agree. Of the Green Bay Packers, he would be the, the top of my list. And if, if like he's the most widely available player of all these, like, potential guys that you're picking up uh that can actually really get something done so i'm with jason that i'd i'd drop a couple bucks for alan lazard so let's let's do the robbie anderson test here would you drop robbie anderson for alan lazard if you had to play a player this week yes i would too yeah yep i would and i, I would drop him for the tony stash or the bateman stash for Agreed. sure yeah yeah everyone we've brought up so far i would drop Robbie. passes for. the robbie test yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, Tim Patrick is interesting because, you know, you are going to have Judy returning. And so there there could be some concern here. You know, stability is kind of what Patrick gives you. He doesn't give you ceiling. And with Judy's return, Sutton's playing well. Are you are you willing to start Patrick against the Washington football team this week? Yes. I, I, I am. The schedule's very nice. And while Only I know two that, for 16 last week. Right. This last week wasn't that good. He, I think he had an end zone target, but he had five he targets. Um, Washington, Dallas, Philly. At some point, Judy will come back, um, and we'll have to – I'll probably bench him. I will not drop him, but bench him to see how that offense, you know, plays out with um, a healthier wide receiver core. But presuming that Judy's not ready yet, I think against Washington, he's a fine play. Yeah, I agree. If if Judy is active, I'm not going to play Patrick. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, so, that, that was a – if it's just him and Sutton again, Washington, their defense stinks. 
I don't really. What happened? I don't know, man. They went man. from dominant, do not unbelievable know. shutdown last year to to not like they're okay. They're like the worst in the league. It's funny though, but because for fantasy they're not as bad as they are in reality. Because they, I think they had five sacks last week or something. I mean, they they still put up positive totals defensively, despite the fact that they um, have been a disaster. But yeah, I don't, you know. They've fallen apart. You know, your offense puts you in terrible positions too, right? You give up a lot of points, but then you're you're working with short fields. I mean, at halftime the other game, you remember this? They're coming. Yes. This is hilarious. We're at halftime, and Taylor Heineke is playing all right, and the the announcer comes out and he's like, "Oh, we interviewed the head coach, and you know, he said, oh, Taylor Heineke is playing like he's totally not afraid to make mistakes." And Jason and I go. He should probably be afraid to make a mistake. <laughs> yeah, <you> and <laughs> I mean, two seconds later, he's got he's got he doesn't slide into the end zone correctly. He fumbled the ball twice. He turned the ball over, and you give your team a short field to try to play defense against. I think at one point the Packers were just trouncing them on the scoreboard, and well, and Washington football team had so many more yards because it was all just mistakes and turnovers. But their defense is bad I mean against wide receivers they're ranked 31st they're giving up the second most points right so Tim Patrick is a play if Judy is out now we don't we don't know that by the time waivers run we're not going to know for sure, sure if Judy's out there so would you pivot and g prefer a a, a different well, let, option yeah let's test that uh Tim Patrick with the risk and I think Judy's back by the way they've talked about him way too much yeah which makes me think that he's also going to be heavily involved but T.Y. Hilton you know, or Tim Patrick. T.Y. Hilton gets Tennessee, another good matchup. Tell um, that to the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, uh, I would, man. I mean, let's say you got, I mean, because you have to spin the fab now. You don't get the choice yeah. of waiting. If if I got to go right now, I guess I'm going Hilton. I would as well. Better, even better schedule over the next three weeks. And the arrow will point up for Hilton as he gets healthy. The arrow will point down for Patrick as Judy gets healthy. What about K.J. Osborne or Tim Patrick? Osborne is barely rostered. You can pick him up off the bye. We, Jason and I were talking yesterday when the Vikings barely lost in overtime to the Bengals. We're like, oh, my gosh, what a bad loss. Now we know the Bengals are great. When they barely lost to the Cardinals, it was like, oh, man, they should have won that game. Mm -hmm. Now they we know the won. Cardinals are great. They should have won both of those games, and that's the number one seed in the AFC and the number one seed in the NFC. Like, maybe the Vikings are good. Mm -hmm. um, Osborne or Patrick, if you're making a decision today? The, uh, Patrick still. Yeah, I would go Patrick. Osborne, um, it took overtime and some late heroics uh, last week to be relevant, and that was his second time being relevant, really, on the season. It is the highest over under the week, 55 points for the Ooh. Dallas. <laughs> Ooh. Minnesota game, so you're going to hear me talk about Cousins this week. Russell Gage last week had a big bomb touchdown. Six targets, four for 67 and one. He's weird, man, because he had seven targets in week two. It, granted, against Tampa Bay, and Matt Ryan looked very rusty in those first couple of weeks. He's looked much better. So he has. I, Russell Gage is... He's at least interesting. He is interesting. He was supposed to come in as like he was one of my later draft picks pretty yeah. frequently because you look at the opportunity he has in this offense, and then he got injured early and has missed you know the majority of the season. Comes back has a good game. The problem I'm not is not interested. Yeah, and and what I was about to say is the reason you're not interested. The problem is he's at best third. Pitts has established himself now going forward that Pitts might be the one on the team. If not, he's the two behind Ridley. So you're really playing for scraps here, and I you got to look at Cordero's ahead of him. Yeah, sure, he he could be ahead of him in the passing game alone as well. And then, so he he being Russell Gage to me is a a weekly matchup, a streaming option. And Carolina's defense is very very good, so this isn't the week for him. What, what do you think about Darius Slayton, New York Giants, where he was kind of the last man standing? I know that, that uh, we had the incredible Dante Pettis touchdown. Uh, but nine targets for Darius Slayton gets to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. It is the Monday night game, so we don't know for sure. Is Tony active? Is Shepard active? It seems impossible to, to pick up and play Slayton, and I am in the Slayton camp, but it legitimately seems impossible to, to do it this week because it came down to game-time decision last week for Shepard, and then Tony may be in that boat again, and it just seems hard. To, Cause what's your pivot? I mean, I'm certainly not playing Slayton with a healthy Tony and a healthy Shepherd. No, and the fact that it's Monday night 
not only makes it harder, you know, to make the decision early, but gives more time for those players to be healthy. I would presume at least one of them would be active. So uh, I'm I'm out on uh, on Slayton. I think we kind of I mentioned James Crowder's name, but we kind of glossed over him with Joe Flacco in in tow, and James Crowder's available in the majority of leagues. He would be a really good pickup to me. I think he's going to be a safe ten points, maybe. Uh, you know, in six games with Flacco last year, he averaged ten fantasy points a game. Um, obviously, they've added Corey Davis. It's a new system, and there's, uh, you know, there's question marks. But I, I think Crowder would be uh, a somewhat safe option in a half or full PPR. Maybe taking on the Bengals this week. That's not something I want to mess around with. With like, I, I think that White probably starts this week. Um, but but either way, like the Bengals defense looks legitimate. The Colts, okay, maybe if maybe if Flat goes up to speed, then I'm okay playing him there. And and then against Buffalo, so for me, I would I'd prefer the other guys over Crowder. Are you stashing Will Fuller? Yes. Okay, because he's yeah. not going to be back this week, but he's likely back after that, and gets to revenge game Houston in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I and Tua's Tua's playing fine, man. Yeah. And I'm I I'm sad to say this, but I would probably like you can chase Khalif Raymond and his six for one fifteen, but unfortunately I think you kind of maybe just stay away from all receivers in Detroit after Amon Ross St. Brown had a goose after nine targets, eight targets, eight targets. Yeah. Just feels feels like you're playing with some fire that you don't want to play with. Mm hmm All right, running back drop candidates and running back options. It's always difficult to find running backs. You know, are you cutting Damian Williams after this past week? Yeah, I think I am. Yeah, you probably I, can. I think he's going to become the third on the depth chart, and uh, that's not necessary for your fantasy roster. Naeem Hines has been fantasy irrelevant. Marlon Mack's getting some work, and obviously Jonathan Taylor's been dominant. Are you cutting Naeem Hines? I, I agree with what Jason had said, that I'm going to wait and see if Marlon Mack is traded. Yeah, he's he's in the Robbie Anderson camp where I'm willing to hold him if there aren't better options. He's not a must drop in case the trade gives him more opportunity. But if there's a better option out there, if you need a start and Kenneth Gainwell is available, then yeah, then I, would, yes, I would drop yes. Naeem Hines. Here's a crazy one, but Miles Sanders has been one of the top names that people bring up. Would you drop Miles Sanders to sign Kenny Gainwell if you had to? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because um, of the injury and... and that's not he hasn't fair. been good before. I yeah, I get that he hasn't been good, but the way things were trending for the team to feature Miles Sanders, I would not drop him. You, you got to package trade him. Miles Sanders still has a big name, had draft capital, is a running back. Someone would stash him. If you if you drop Miles Sanders, I promise you, he's picked up immediately the next day yeah, without by question me, I'd for pick him up. tons of fab, which means you can trade him. Man. Are these the fantasy finishes you just sent over to me, Brooksy? Yes, sir. They're bad. Fantasy finishes for Miles Sanders, 14 in week one, and then 37, 37, 45, 37. Well, he's consistent. Uh, and 46, or 33 and 46. Yeah, that's a – I. my only question is, is he a landmine? Oh, that, sure. That you don't necessarily believe is a landmine. I mean, Kenneth Gainwell has been a running back two – Three times. He's been better on the season than for fantasy in a way than uh, Miles Sanders has, and that's with Miles Sanders being the primary, the very primary back. You know, Miles Sanders has been up at 80% snap percentages uh, here in the recent past. So Kenneth Gainwell is, is very, very interesting. To it's me. rare that we're going to recommend you cut a running back unless you're going to replace him with a better running back. Not just – you don't cut to cut. I mean, even Mike Davis, right? Like Mike Davis is another name – he Ooh, was absolutely man. atrocious. Like he's he's not somebody you can start right now. No. But do you cut him? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's funny because you're talking about a starting running back for an NFL, an NFL team. You he's don't, like Mark Ingram. You don't hit waiver wires. Yeah, you don't cut that. But then you look at what he's done, and it's uh oh nothing. So l here here's what I need your help with. We need to figure out the Kenneth Gainwell Boston Scott situation. It seemed that once Miles Sanders left, Boston Scott was going to get the goal line. And he got work as well. I mean, he had more carries than Kenneth Gainwell did. Gainwell obviously had way more targets and to me is obviously more valuable than Boston Scott. I think it's But are be... both of them actually a dart throw this week cuz you played Detroit? Yeah, I mean, uh, certainly the 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 
the reality is you're not going to have Kenneth Gainwell take over everything. Boston Scott's probably going to almost usurp uh, Kenneth Gainwell as a as a running back come in on the you know those first and second down. But we've seen Kenneth Gainwell already this season three different games being used in the red zone in the ten zone. Um, so and that was with Miles Sanders there. So I certainly think that the the opportunity is going up for Kenneth Gainwell, and he would be my priority this week. I think Boston Scott is someone that if I can't get a couple other options, uh, you know, I'll have a $0 bid on Boston Scott, but I would not be excited to play him, even with the plus match. Would you cut Mike Davis to play Boston Scott? No. Just roll Davis back up? Yeah. yeah. Brandon Bolden. Brandon Bolden. I think has 10 carries on the entire year. So he's not a running back. He's a wide receiver for the Bill did it again. Oh, he really did. He got me good this time. It's James White. I mean, James White, you could say was not a running. You know, he correct. He would get very few carries, but he's involved in the passing game. 28% of snaps. Yeah. It's seven targets, six receptions, 79 yards uh, this last week for Brandon Bolden. Once he was healthy. So what do you do? Do you, are you interested in Bolden or are we just going to live this like, recurring nightmare of J.J. Taylor, Ramondre yeah. Stevenson, Brandon Bolden, and when the answer is Damian Harris alone. Maybe very deep leagues I'd be interested in Brandon Bolden. But full PPR. Yeah, full PPR deep. But other than that, I'm no. Cause like, <sighs> he had 46% of snaps in week three. He was the 49th best running back. He had 32% of snaps in week four, and he had 38% in week five and he was 37th and 44th so didn't destroy you when you rolled him out there um four catches six catches in the other games with the snap counts that he had uh, from this past week yeah you're going to get a ppr bump so he's he's someone like i would rather play brandon bolden in a very very plus matchup the chargers uh are the uh, yeah. third worst team against the running back position i would rather play him than a Mike Davis, but he's at that level. I don't I don't want to play Mike Davis. This isn't like, oh, so I want to play Brandon Bolden. I'm just saying I would when you're in the crapshoot of yucky, you know, you're in the mucky muck, as uh they would say. And the yucky yuck. Uh, well, I want to be in the castle made of clouds. Thank you, Mike. Um when you're there, I want someone who's gonna catch the ball. And versus someone that has to get a touchdown. Like Mike Davis is I, I don't think going to do enough and if he doesn't get a touchdown. So I would rather have a Brandon Bolden who is going to, you know, I'll say point whenever he catches the ball. Interest in Rashad Penny or Jermichael Hasty. Penny looked atrocious last night. They, it looked like they tried to, like, like, okay, let's see if we can save Alex Collins because maybe Penny has something. And he mm -hmm. went six for nine and they pulled him and you never saw him. Yeah. I, I think Hasty is worth a stash at this time of year where it, just knowing what he could become. That was his first you know, week back, and he still went right back into that role of being a, a third down guy, a pass catching money back. So he's he's at least interesting. He's not startable at this point, but I think he should be on benches for for the the upside of what he could become. I would certainly agree with that. Hey, if Hasty's on the waiver wire and I've got a, a spot, I would be putting a claim in on Jermichael Hasty. Not so much on Rashad Penny. Obviously, they still hope to have Chris Carson come back. Alex Collins finished the game healthy and is the is the one. Um, now, that being said... Homer get, looked good in his limited time, too. Yeah, they do get Jacksonville this week, and last night's game was a very good run defense in the New Orleans Saints in a wet, sloppy weather. So, it could be better for Rashad Penny. Yeah, and the, the we need to look for Chris Carson news, uh, Brooks, but I, I feel like I heard... Someone was saying they think they're going to get Russell back before they get Carson back. They might have Russell back next week. Oh, well, then that would be <laughs> – Has he missed three games already? I thought that uh, – oh, no, he'd have no. to miss one more. Yeah. yeah. One so, more. Uh, But that just inferring, like, Carson might be out for not just the three games. Right. Might be out longer. Yeah, so the news has been really positive on Russell Wilson. Right. So Russell Wilson – So he has he, to miss one more? He has to miss one more, and then week nine will be their bye week. So I would expect him oh, back, he'll in, be week back in week 10. Oh, man. So I get, to, I get to hope and pray for like one catch for a touchdown for Metcalf for the next That is week. correct. Um, stash alert here. Sonny Michelle, make sure he's stashed on your team. 
Um, and then P Ryan. Yeah, P Ryan looked good. Mm -hmm. And then maybe no one in Tennessee. Yeah, it's worth bringing up Darrington Evans. We've talked about Jeremy McNichols being the kind of insurance back. So I was getting a bunch of targets. What's important is that you know Darrington Evans was the starter. He got injured. Uh, McNichols well, not the starter. Uh, yes, he was the, the backup. He was, he was the backup. Thank you. Um, uh, he got injured, and McNichols took that role over. Now Darrington Evans is back, and that's not to say okay, grab him. It's just to say grab nobody there, and that McNichols doesn't need to be rostered as the insurance back for Derrick Henry. Uh, P. Ryan should definitely be rostered as an insurance back, but I also think you could play him this week. Against the uh, the Jets? Yeah, against the Jets. I mean, you you saw what the Patriots did, right? I mean, right. J.J. Taylor, you, you got to fall into the end zone a couple of times. Uh, Brandon Bolden was fine. I mean, P. Ryan had a – he looked good last week. 48% of snaps. Yeah, he he's on the field enough. He had a good run, a good touchdown run last week, and he – it's the Jets. I think you're right, actually. I think he may be a better play than – then Brandon I Bolden. I played him over Brandon Bolden. I played him <laughs> over Boston Scott. Yeah, so maybe P. Ryan is All right. maybe much higher on our pickups. Tight end waiver wire, Zach Ertz, if he's out there, which he might be. Uh, Small chance. About a quarter of a league still. Yeah. Uh, five targets, three for 66, and a touchdown, Mike, his longest of his career. I heard. Would Almost had another one, but he ran the wrong way. Came out afterwards and said it was. Oh, classic Zach his fault <laughs> they had to help him on the field with tons of calls and stuff just coming into the team short week but he is going to be involved the cardinals they have too many weapons and so the middle of the field it's a, there's a reason max williams who has never historically been relevant mm -hmm. was relevant in arizona and it's because aj green deandre hopkins christian kirk were opening the entire field up yeah you you can't guard every blade of grass and then the one you're not going to guard is Zach Ertz. So it's yeah. like, well, let's leave him open. And then Ricky Seals-Jones bounced back 6 from 51, played every snap, and uh, Logan Thomas is not going to be back yet. He, correct. He's eligible to return. He's not healthy to return. So Ricky Seals-Jones certainly should be uh, picked up if he's not rostered. But assuming that Zach Ertz and Ricky Seals-Jones are rostered, can we talk about the Muth? Are you talking <laughs> we about can. Them setting the muth luth. The all the muth is luth. Pat <laughs> fire muth. <laughs> it's getting worse. Yeah, it's a getting better. <laughs> That's right. Mike. The last I time we saw Friar Muth. <laughs> now we, we can say it. Yeah, uh, he was seven for fifty-eight. We already know that Juju's gone for the year. We also know, just like the discussion on Kyle Pitts, superstar yesterday. Um that players that are rookies, they get better. They get more involved. They earn the trust of the quarterback. All of a sudden, you know, this Heath Miller clone becomes Heath Miller in the eyes of Big Ben. I think he is a worthwhile add. Uh, he is a great Mark Andrews potential pivot this week and see if he can catch lightning in a bottle. Do you prefer him over Dan Arnold, the postman from Jacksonville? That's tough because Arnold is a more explosive player, uh, but... Yeah, I mean, I see them very similarly in terms of value. I think both are good waiver wire fill-ins for Mark Andrews this week or Darren Waller this week, who's on the bye and missed last week. Those two players, I do prefer them over like a touchdown Hail Mary play of Mo Alley Cox. Like if Mo Alley Cox doesn't get in the end zone, he will maybe goose you. Yep. I would, but I would he's agree still, with that. You know, and CJ Uzama, are you chasing the magic? So Uzama is the name I wanted to bring up because – it's ironic. We we talk about you can always take a flyer on you know Robert Tunyon, and maybe this is a good week for that with Devonta Adams being way. out. So that that's great. And you know you took him in in uh, your DraftKings lineup last week, Andy. He scored a touchdown, had a good game. Uzama, did I win? No. Let's tune in Friday. <laughs> um, we got to figure that out. Oh yeah, we we because sure Friday did. is the Halloween episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. Be kind. But Uzama, I think, has five <laughs> touchdowns in his last like four <laughs> games. So he's got the touchdown opportunity, and he's got enough athleticism. You know, we bring up Zach Ertz because you can't guard every weapon. Well, when you've got Tyler Boyd and Jamar Chase and T Higgins, 
And a good quarterback. And a good quarterback. You know, C.J. Uzama finds empty space in the middle of the I mean, field, and he's athletic enough to – It's so tough, I though. know that he doesn't have a lot of receptions. That's why I kind of compared it's, him to it's not, Tanyan. It's not just that. I mean, the, he, the, the two monster games where he was the number one tight end on the week, but other than that, 15 yards, 16 yards, Yeah, but he got a zero. touchdown in one of those, right? Yeah, he did. He has five touchdowns in the last four weeks. Yeah. So I think he is. I'd play him over Moali. Yeah, if you're in that position where you're looking for a desperation start against the Jets, um, I you know y he could very easily break a tackle and take one of the house. One of his big games was against the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, another one of those really really poor tackling defenses. You are right though. I mean, when, when Jamar Chase is taking the top off the defense on almost every play, there's opportunity there for misdirection and and they're taking advantage. Um, I want to turn to the defensive side. Oh, it's a good week for defense. It really is. There's a lot of streaming options here. I mean, Buffalo, Buffalo's potentially was dropped because of the bye week. So yeah. they're they're the number one, and they have they Miami, are the priority, Jacksonville, and the Jets. They are available in 32 percent of leagues, so it's still a minority. But everyone listening, go check. You might have a decent defense, and you don't even think about. You're not even going to check your defensive. Uh, waivers. Go check and see if Buffalo is there because if they are there, spend on them, mm -hmm. acquire them. They will win a couple of weeks here with the. I mean, the Dolphins, Jaguars, and Jets is just too good for for who is they are currently for fantasy the number one fantasy scoring defense. Well, maybe not after this bye week, but they were going into last week. Um, they're going to dominate both sides of the Denver Washington game. Seem fine to me. Uh, Denver struggling on offense tremendously. There's an errant, nasty interception every week from Teddy Bridgewater. And then the Washington football team is a disaster on offense, too, and the Denver Broncos are a better defense than Washington is. Would so. you play those guys over the Bengals? No. Because no. I, would, I would go – I would order them the Buffalo Bills and then the, the Bengals against the Jets. What about my... the Steelers, though, against maybe no Baker? I mean, I think that the Steelers' <sighs> defense – they were an, they were ferocious sack-wise last time. We saw that they're a very good defense, and I like playing a good defense against a, a mediocre quarterback. But Case Keenum is, you know, to say it's, uh, you know, without Baker, really doesn't do service to to Case Keenum. Case Keenum protects the ball and is a very serviceable, capable backup. So I don't think it's like I'm. I'm a little upset for you know the Cincinnati Bengals play that they got Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco's obviously not good, but I was really excited about first start for. Unknown rookie. And I think the Steelers are my favorite stream. Are they play of the week? Yeah, even I, even though Cleveland's getting their second best running back. Yeah, back? They're, they're they're such a good. Oh, oh yeah. gosh. they're so nice good day. against they're so good against running backs. I mean, they are. They're they're seventh in the league. You can't them. stop Dearness and Nicholas Chubb. Yeah, if you yes, you can. You <laughs> when you want to, you can, and then you got to make Keith Keenan beat you with. No wide receivers. Wait, who was your number one running back? Dearness Johnson. Okay, so, so I thought you were giving it to Hunt. Oh, no. But, yeah. Dearness. You know the Steelers play the Detroit, the Chicago Bears and the Detroit Lions the next two weeks? I would start. I, oh. would, I would sign them, oh. and I would play them this week. Yeah. And they would be the priority for me over any other okay, team than the Bills. You convinced me. Right. If, if, it's just the, if it's just the one week, I would go with the Bengals. But you got to be forward-facing yeah. here, and that's – that's not bad. Ironically, the Bengals then get Cleveland the next week. So yeah. all all good options. Um, how about would you go down to not as good of defenses like the uh, Falcons and Eagles who have good matchups? Um, the Eagles playing uh, against Detroit. The, the Falcons against the Panthers. Uh, the Falcons this week are okay. They yeah. really are. They're at home. They have Carolina. Carolina is what did he pass for? One hundred and eleven yards. I mean, they pulled him out for P.J. Walker and then said he's the guy. I mean, this is a – without Christian McCaffrey, this is an abysmal offense. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. And the Falcons were okay last week for fantasy. And Christian McCaffrey, I'm doing the math in my head, still needs one more week. At least, yeah. Does he just refuse to come back? Is it Could it be that bad that he's like – I hope so. Oh, because you finally moved on. I finally moved on. <laughs> Let's Train. talk quarterback options. Full stream ahead. My stream of the week at the quarterback position, Kirk Cousins against Dallas. Mm -hmm. Highest over under of the week. Cousins has been reliable this year. He's available in a lot of leagues. Dallas has allowed the third most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. Huge yardage numbers. 
It's going to be a glorious week for Kirk Cousins, and he has shown a propensity and ability to bring it in a shootout type of game. You saw this with Matthew Stafford in, against you know their matchups twice a year with Detroit. They'd be in high-scoring affairs, brought up the 55-point over-under. Cousins is a smash play. Yeah, I'm going to go with Carson Wentz. Um, we talked about Tennessee. They're allowing the fifth most passing yards, fourth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks, and that includes the complete shutdown of Patrick Mahomes this last week. Uh, but Tennessee was at home. Tennessee's only played three road games so far. Week two, Russ Wilson cooked them, 343-2. and two. Week four, Zach Wilson. Remember his good game, 292-2? I do. That was against Tennessee on the road. Are you and Russ, like, so close – like such good friends that you go Russ now, like no Russell. How dare you? What, I mean, you just you how said Russ. You seem like dare you? Like What's short, interesting? It's a I say Russ to be disrespectful to Russell Wilson, divisional opponent of my Arizona Cardinals. What's interesting is I've I've heard him like people call him Russ all the time. It's Russ. His best but, friends do. Yeah, but uh, well, it let Russ cook like that was the whole thing. But I don't think I've ever actually heard it, Russ Wilson. Yeah, that's where it got strange. Is that you combined the the the, the abbreviation formal right? informal? Yeah, let Russ Wilson cook. <laughs> like that sounds like a completely different the human being. Yeah. Um. Well, he still torched him <laughs> uh, on the road. And Trevor Lawrence was the quarterback nine. So I think at home Carson Wentz is going to be great. All right, don't do it. Someone's got to do it. No, they I, don't. I, I yes. picked them up last week for a play this week. Someone's so got to do. Someone's someone's got to put on the iron pants. Oh my gosh, what does that even mean? <laughs> it means you gotta protect your crotch, my okay, friend. Okay, all right. It's Daniel Jones. Is that what I baby. Oh my it's gosh. Daniel Jones against the Kansas City Chiefs. It worked yet again, even with the uh, the Derek the, the Tennessee Derrick Henrys. Ryan Tannehill still got it done. Uh he was a great option this last week. And then, and Derrick Henry threw a touchdown against them. Daniel Jones we're hoping that he gets at least a a weapon or two back, but the Kansas City defense just gives up so many points uh, in real life and to fantasy quarterbacks that you can stream him this week. Now you have Daniel Jones and Kirk Cousins. I do. Oh, so yes. are you? Are Who you, are you, you favoring? I will play Kirk Cousins. Yes, you, so you will. If that's the case. That means that Daniel Jones Take is about to go hammer. Jo and that oh, means yeah. Kirk Cousins is going to fail because that decision you have had to make, you've had to choose between those two guys every week in Dynasty. Oh, and I did it wrong again last week, oh, everybody. Man. Can you just trade one of them away? I want to. Just cut one. Just, <laughs> yes. just you In gotta, Dynasty. Yes, in a Dynasty league, you got to go, you've hurt me too much. See you later. Unbelievable. Okay, well, uh, let's thank Traeger once again for supporting the show. I, I just put out on my IG a few days ago. We did the big burger night on the Traeger. Mm. And, uh, big I, burgers. Oh, the weather here right now, this is when you are happy to be in Arizona. It's beautiful every night, which means I want to grill every single night. And uh, they were they were spectacular. I'm going to grill tonight. I, it's, it's been like a week. Can I, can I come over? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All are welcome. <laughs> uh, so fire up that Traeger wood fired grill. You can do it on game day. You can monitor it with the Wi-Fi technology. Beautiful. And uh, you know my my version, my grill. What was what, what, the Timberline? I've got that little pass through for the probe, so I can check the meat uh, temperature. I have always been terrified, always, of grilling chicken because I, I oh, yeah. I'm a I'm a chicken when it comes to chicken. It's, oh. my my motto has always been, it better be done. And yeah. so my chicken has always been overdone until I got the trigger. Now yeah, and then you have confidence. Now yes, you know now it's you, fantastic. You cook it to that temperature. It yep. tells you to cook it to, and then you're like, yeah, oh, my, this is perfect chicken. My, my phone says, safe. go get the chicken. All right, Traeger.com slash footballers. If you're interested in checking out some of their grills, Traeger.com slash footballers. That's it. What a great show. What an out I mean, the Halloween episode is getting <laughs> so close. <laughs> I'm excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be back with you tomorrow. Thursday night preview of that exciting game. No rain. Just fantasy points. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.